America is addicted. According to the National Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 91 Americans die every day from opioid overdoses. And as the country scrambles to bring relief to its victims, leading healthcare organizations are teaming up to combat abuse. Major pharmaceutical and insurance companies like Pfizer, Prime Therapeutics, and Blue Cross Blue Shield have just announced a two-year plan to eradicate 300 tons of unwanted medication through safe disposal kiosks in over 1,500 Walgreens stores across the nation. This is just one of the steps being taken to combat the prescription drug crisis, but how can we go about winning the war? PBS NewsHour has just wrapped a special two-week examination of the issue called America Addicted, with a series of reports from around the nation. We're delighted to have joining us now to discuss their findings, the host, Hari Srinivasan. The series was very powerful, very revealing, very compelling, and, and in many ways very frightening. Yeah. Let me talk about some of the things that you talked about there. Oftentimes we hear people saying, you know, well, are there parallels here to the, the crack epidemic of the past and now the opioid epidemic? What did you find? Well, you know, well, sadly, well, one of the, the things that we actually also taped a conversation about race and the intersection in, in this. In, in the crack, crack epidemic, it was almost all, um, the victims were almost always black, right? And it was in African-American communities. And then the difference between the crack epidemic and this one is that there was actually a, a tremendous amount more public violence associated, drive-by shootings, gang slayings, and people wanted to take action collectively much faster. But um, there has been a very different perception in how the victims in this epidemic are treated, how they're talked about, um, that they're not made out to be the criminals in this, they're made out to be the victims. I mentioned at the top the, the, the fact that some of the pharmaceutical companies now are joining in this, this battle, if you will. How important is it to get them involved and what, what should we be expecting them to do as part of this battle? Well, you know, I think that the steps that you described in the beginning are great steps. Uh, I think you, you need uh, to get those pills off the street. You know, you, you go talk to the mayor of Huntington, West Virginia. I wanted to ask you about that, because you yeah. went down there. Yeah, and he and the fire chief and a lot of other folks that we spoke to there the will lay a lot, huge amount of the responsibility of, of this crisis at the feet of the pharmaceutical companies. Right, when you look around West Virginia, and we also talked to a Pulitzer Prize winning reporter about his investigation on the pill mills and the volume of pills that were coming in to one of the smallest states in the country, West Virginia had some of the largest numbers of prescription opioids ever. I mean, you know, a tiny town called Kermit that maybe has 300 person population had you know, hundreds of thousands and millions of pills prescribed to it. And you're telling me or anybody in their right mind would say, listen, the, the companies know exactly where every pill is sold, right? So how did they not step in any earlier when they saw the kinds of spikes in these numbers? You talk about the notion of, of we're viewing these people as victims now instead of criminals. And, and in the reporting, some of the things you talked about is the youngest among us becoming victims. I'm going to take a look at a, a piece of that report and then come back to talk to you about it. At Cabell Huntington Hospital, one out of every five babies delivered has been exposed to drugs before they were born. We are a 15-bed unit, and today we have 18. Um, last week we had 26. Sarah Murray helped create a unit specifically for these newborns. You're keeping this place dim for the baby's sake? Yes, um, we try to keep a low stimulus environment. That means we keep the lights low and we keep the unit as quiet as possible. Babies here go through withdrawal for drugs like painkillers and heroin. And more often these days, other substances being cut into the heroin supply. So you look at that and, and you say, how does, you know, this, how does this happen? You know, that, that number, I can't get out of my head. One in five babies in that hospital are born exposed to drugs. That's, think about the societal consequences. We don't have any five-year, 10-year, 20-year longitudinal study on what happens to a brain if it's exposed prenatally to some of these drugs. I mean, five years from now, I mean, they, 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 unfortunately, this has already been going on long enough where some of these children are slowly starting to get into daycare centers, pre-kindergarten, uh, you know, and, and get into the school system. Well, what's going to happen 10 years from now? It's not going to be an even distribution on the bell curve. Some classrooms might have two out of five, three out of five kids that were born with this strike against them. So what happens to an entire society when, even at, the, at this point, 15 to 20% of their population is affected from day one. 
As you step back away from it and look at it, do you see any signs of, of real hope or optimism? I mean, I, I wish I could, but uh, you talk to the people on the ground and they're almost to a level will tell you it's going to get worse before it gets better. That the overdose death numbers that we are aware of for everyone that actually overdoses and dies, there are maybe up to 300 people that haven't gotten to that point yet that are using, right? So there are communities that are going to have to go through this incredibly painful period where they're going to have to hit rock bottom for this to slowly get better. I mean, us and lots of other media and shining a light on this is a step, again, in the right direction. But this is one of the darkest stories I've ever covered. I mean, I've been through uh, my share of natural disasters and developing countries, but I think there's also... Uh, you know, how could this be happening in the United States? You know, that, that's a, even more frustrating, is that we have all the advantages of the most developed and greatest country on the planet, so to speak, and how could we not see this coming, and how are we not stopping this more aggressively? Well, as I said, the, the whole series was, was revealing and powerful and frightening in a, a lot of levels. And uh, Hari, I appreciate the work that you've done, and always good to talk with you. Thanks, Thanks for spending some time with us. You'd be well. And for those of you who haven't seen PBS NewsHour series, America Addicted, don't worry. You can go to pbs.org newshour to check out their coverage of this epidemic. <laughs>